the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you and we thank you for tonight. We have come to experience your glory in dimensions that will lift our lives and lift our destinies. In this place are people within this auditorium and all around outside, many following online with hearts determined to receive tonight. Lord, we decree and declare that there is a hearing of faith and the walking of miracles. Let the sick be healed tonight. Let age-long captivities be lifted tonight. Let there be restorations tonight. Let there be transformation by the word tonight. Let there be impartations tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified in Jesus' name. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you. It's an honor again and again. I truly celebrate and salute everyone, uh, bishops, men and women of God, the honorable members, all the politicians, members of parliament. The Lord honor you in Jesus' name. Please be seated. We have a lot to do tonight. Um, praise the Lord. I believe that the Lord will touch us in a very remarkable way tonight. In Jesus' name. We began... A discussion yesterday talking about Jesus Christ as the revelation of the glory of the Father according to Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3 the Bible says God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days the Bible says spoken to us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds Verse 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory. So we see from scripture that Jesus is the brightness of the Father's glory. The brightness of his glory, the Bible says, and the express image. The image of God is not a shadow. The image of God is a person. He is called Jesus. Hallelujah. And we began to explore according to Revelation chapter 1 from verse 4 and 5, the definition of the personhood of Jesus based on the encounter that John had. Hallelujah. This morning, for those of you who were not around, we started talking about the glory proper. And um, we discussed a few things that I think is worthy of note. We define glory, that the glory of a person or a thing refers to the weightiness it is an attempt to describe the value, the value of that person or the value of that thing. The glory of a phone can be seen when you tell us the features in that phone. It is a system of justifying the price or the cost of that phone. Are we together? The glory of an individual. When we celebrate a man, for instance, and we say this man has a PhD in this, he's a student of this, he's a fellow of this institution, it is an attempt to show you the glory of that man. 
are we together so the glory of god refers to the manifestation of every attribute and every quality that makes god god his goodness is his glory his power is his glory and i did observe in the morning that the glory of anything cannot be appreciated until it is revealed that glory cannot be appreciated when it is hidden i gave us an example uh, please just register the volume a bit we'll have the time to i did tell us that um in the morning remember when when you're about to join a couple usually the bride dresses so much she did not dress to cover herself the goal is that it will be unveiled but in the meantime as she walks through that cathedral the veil is on her but somewhere in that service there's something that the priest would say you may now unveil your bride is that true and they unveil her and they appreciate how gorgeous she's looking this is how it is with spiritual things so god expects that the saints would become the revealers of the glory of god according to romans chapter 8 from verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he says are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us so there is a measure of the glory of god that will be revealed in us is that true that means like um solomon lange was sharing you can imagine the marvelous testimony coming from his background accessing the grace of god and then rising to the position that god has placed him now that is a revelation of god's glory that means if you want to know what god can do you look at the saints the saints are supposed to be a revelation of the potentials of god that means nobody should look at you and hate god you are supposed to be an epistle that explains the character of god in miracles signs and wonders through the excellence that is captured in your life is that true it means that if the saints do not rise listen to me if the saints do not prosper if the saints do not know god if the saints do not grow in character if the power of god is not made manifest in the saints is an indictment on god and is it that that act of um, laxity misrepresents god and the potentials that are in god are we together for those of you here who have companies you have businesses especially manufacturing there's something we call a quality control system is that true you create a quality control system so that everything that comes out of you can be vouched for and when there is consistency of results a time comes where your brand is known for that excellence people no longer buy the product they buy your brand the moment they see your logo on anything they trust it the most expensive clothes and all of this in the fashion world today people don't just buy clothes they buy logos they buy brands so when you say this particular brand and now you say it is this amount People do not argue because they perceive that there is a level of excellence that is expected from that brand. So when God settles down to make believers, he does so for his namesake. There is a point he needs to prove to creation. And mankind is that canvas that he will use to paint his glory and now reveal to creation. Are we together now? So when you prosper, when you grow in grace when you increase when you express dominion over principalities and powers over systems and structures when you advance it is not just to your own good it is for the good of the name of the lord also john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus is praying now and here's what he said father he says the hour is come glorify thy son why that thy son may glorify thee so we now know the way god is glorified he is glorified when the saints are glorified is that true i told us in the morning that the principle of shared dominion is such that no man can glorify himself you will have to invest your glory in another entity outside of you is the excellence of that object outside of you that brings your glory is that true so the glory of the father is only seen when the son is glorified 
the glory of the Son is only seen when the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit is glorified. And the glory of the church is only seen in their dominion over this system and this structure. Praise the name of the Lord. That means anything that comes to your life attempting to stop you from rising to the fullness of your spiritual potential is not just fighting you is fighting the revelation of the glory of god for instance sickness for instance poverty for instance failure you see why we attack these things we don't attack them just because we have any personal we attack them because they are interruptions to the manifestation of the glory of god So everywhere we see sickness, everywhere we see failure, everywhere we see defeat, everywhere we see spiritual lukewarmness, everywhere we see a mediocre life and destiny, we have a mandate under God as, as a result of our jealousy for him. We, we, we fight anything that attempts to misrepresent him. You see, let me tell you this. Every time Satan afflicts men, pay attention, mankind is the highest the zenith of god's creation when satan afflicts men when satan buffets people when we live a life of failure spiritual laxity moral decadence satan is using man as a a canvas a painter's canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion is still questionable in the earth when god heals and delivers is god using man to write a reply back to creation i am still on the throne so when you celebrate a miracle when you celebrate a manifestation of god's power it's more than the validation of the authenticity of a man of god you are in partnership with heaven writing a letter to say you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are god alone you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne that is the reason why when people see these manifestations of god's power it gives them a consciousness that there is still a god in heaven who watches over the affairs of men you know satan has an attitude of bullying people out of the consciousness of godliness he makes you believe is there god and you hear people asking questions is there god in heaven if he's in heaven why why are we like this so god raises men and women to reveal his glory the concept of god's glory is not complicated we have a mandate under god that consistently our lives become and remain an effulgence of his excellence i say it this way if someone forgot to do his devotion in the morning when he sees you he should not feel bad because you are a continuation of his devotion he can read scriptures through your life while he's feeling bad that i forgot my bible at home the moment he looks at your life he can see scriptures a display of the possibilities of god men should never look at your life and forget that there is a god the excellence in your life should force them back to know that there is god they look at the dexterity the prosperity the blessing that you are so blessed and yet your heart is not tied to these things you love god with all your heart realms of favor that are inexplainable listen if you do not believe this you will live a defeated life number one and number two god will not be glorified in your life john chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit that means this is how god is glorified when you bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples in your bearing fruit you justify that the holy spirit mentored you you justify that you were built by god you can know a block that was built by Julius Berger with one simple test throw it up it will fall to the ground and not break you know that this is superior engineering so when God fashions you you see why God takes his time to make men 
because he's about to place his name on them and he does not want to place his name on a product that fails so woefully you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor I just want to say thank you so in my life be glorified be glorified in this state be glorified be glorified There is a level of the manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom that Jalingo can bring forth. That it will now begin to be a reference point. Have you noticed what is happening in Jalingo? Suddenly, there is a level of, of moral progress. Young people are beginning to be responsible. It becomes, it's too significant to be ignored. No! What is suddenly happening? There is such an avalanche of godliness, moral excellence. Young people are now coming, bringing their lives into order. Every church you go to, there is fire on that altar. People getting jobs, people living responsibly, the businesses of people excelling, and yet their hearts are not connected to those things. Loving Jesus. Now you call that a revelation of God's glory because it will compel anybody who takes Jesus as a joke to think. These are the evidences. The end of every argument is the presence of results. Creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God. We have given too many excuses. It's time for creation to see the manifestation of the glory of and the power of God are we together then in the morning I began to give my intention is to give three keys but I must say this we spoke about the concept of divine patterns please pay attention this is a very important punchline in this whole discourse of the glory of God that a pattern is an ordinance a pattern is a modus operandi a pattern is a, a defined and authorized pathway to achieving a result are we together now please say patterns one more time shout patterns say divine patterns according to scripture doing a quick recap according to scripture god does not create anything twice he creates it once and then he ties in that creation the spiritual pattern for the continuity of that process so for instance god formed the first man is that true brought a woman out of that man and he's never had to create any human species again why because he programmed a pattern called procreation so if you want more men it's not an issue of prayer and crying you subscribe to the pattern that dimension of his glory depends on your operating that pattern now listen please the patterns of God, divine patterns, forerun the glory of God. Divine patterns forerun the glory of God. That means every time you want to see the glory of God, and you now know what I mean by the glory of God, the, the, the summation of every possibility that can be in God. There is a spiritual pattern to see the glory of God manifest as healing and health. There is a spiritual pattern that brings prosperity and the blessing of the Lord to the saints. There is a spiritual pattern that makes for speed and restoration. There is a spiritual pattern that supplies for dominion over principalities and powers. Is that true? There is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for the arrival and the multiplication of the anointing. Your assignment is to pay attention to the ministry of teaching priests. In partnership with the Holy Ghost because Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and I will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart they are like spiritual chefs and their assignment is to feed you with knowledge 
and with understanding. So Sunday after Sunday, every time we gather, Sunday and every other weekday, we are learning among other things, the spiritual patterns. Jesus, the way. Jesus, the way. God's authorized system of operation. Listen, the difference between any two believers is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference between the quality of the Christian experience of any two believers is not the love of God invested towards them. It is the same love towards them. The difference between any two believers is the degree to which they have been able to access thorough spiritual understanding on the ways of God. We examined the life of Moses and we saw that before Moses asked the Lord for glory, he first asked, show me your ways. It is the knowledge of the patterns of God. There is a spiritual pattern for effective ministry. If you do not find that effective ministry, no matter how well-meaning and well-intentioned you are, you will struggle in ministry and your life and your ministry will be no representation at all of God's potential. Politicians, we have a number of them here gratefully tonight. There is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for effective governance. For instance, according to the templates given to us from scripture, any territory is only transformed when there is a tripartite formation of king, priest, prophet. It is never king alone. The king represents those who legislate. But behind the scene, there must be the priestly and the prophetic ministry backing the kings. Otherwise, the forces of the territory will destroy them. So if the only thing you have is just election you will not do well because it is more than policies in the house of assembly there are spirits in the days of daniel there are the spirits of the medis and the patients that fight the purposes of god so it is king priest prophet that tripartite formation is what brings dominion sociologically speaking longevity has a spiritual pattern that controls it. People don't just live long by mistake. No. As, as, as helpless, and, and I don't mean to insult your pedigree, but as helpless as people look in the face of death, a man can have dominion over untimely death. It is true. Death itself is a spirit that depends on other spirits to operate. Is the rider on the fourth horse. There were four horses in the book of Revelation. And he saw one that rode upon a dark horse, a pale horse. His name is death. Death depends on other spirits to come. It depends on fear. It depends on sicknesses. It depends on tragedy. It cannot just come to you like that. There are spirits that must forerun death. Are we together? The person who opens the door for a thief to come and the thief, who is greater in terms of destruction? We don't fear fear, yet we fear other things that depend on fear to happen. And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Are we together? So we're talking divine patterns. Everybody you see who has risen to an enviable position in the kingdom, bringing glory to the name of the Lord in ministry, in business, in politics and governance, in family life, in career, whether consciously or unconsciously, they have stumbled into divine patterns and have operated it either, either haphazardly or intentionally. The consistency of their results show that they are walking by light. But it is possible to haphazardly stumble into these things and you find out that for one week, favor just happens to you and after then it doesn't happen again. There are principles. When I learned this, I rejoiced. Because I found out that there are keys. It is on the strength of these divine patterns 
that a man can walk in dominion in experience manifesting the glory of god you may have heard me say that dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending divine patterns you are said to be matured and you are said to be strong in this kingdom and to the degree to which you have through the sacrifice of alignment and cooperation with the word and the spirit you have pieced together the various patterns that are connected to the outcomes spiritual outcomes so with uncanny mastery like a doctor if someone comes to meet you and says for instance I am a family man and things are going very bad it looks like my life is going haywire while he is talking from his speech as a matured believer you can see the gaps you can see the areas where he's not working in keeping the glory of God is absent in his life because there are patterns that have not been adhered to now you can advise him I know what you are doing when a patient is talking to a doctor and he's saying doctor uh, I have headache last week I I even passed out the doctor is not interested there are things the doctor is looking for and when you meet a consultant sometimes while you are talking he can even be eating or writing something and you meet a doctor please please give me your attention I say look I've worked in this thing for 30 years I have mastered the things that cause various sicknesses so whilst you are talking it's not your stories I'm listening for in two three minutes i can pick with uncanny mastery the things you are doing wrong and i can tell you go and buy this drug buy this drug buy this drug and i don't need to see you again i know it will work the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully is god helping us one of the things i'm trusting that will happen to us in this conference is that we move past the realm of guessing you see most believers we do not have certainty of divine patterns so when we are confronted with situations that require the manifestation of the glory of god what happens is that we try anything we know at random spiritually speaking the blood of jesus the name of jesus we try communion we try prayer we try the fire of the holy ghost we touch and agree we try giving we just know that somehow one of them will work and you are right it will work the danger is you cannot reproduce the results because you don't know which one was responsible for what so when the average believer is plagued with a situation on one hand man, the man of God is praying for you on another hand you are praying then you are sowing a seed then you are taking communion then you are calling the name of Jesus then you are confessing the word every one of these arsenals of victory have their allocations there are results that they produce you have to know what is connected to what are we blessed you don't just become an influential person no there are divine patterns that are responsible for influence in the kingdom and every person again i'm glad we have those in government and politics if you do not understand these divine patterns you may be well-meaning but you will not be able to command the kind of influence that allows you to lead god's people effectively there is a grace As a man of God, there is a grace that helps your congregation to hear and understand what you are saying. Just because what you are teaching is true does not mean people will believe you. No. Paul calls it the grace that makes all men see. It's a grace. So your assignment as a believer is that in partnership with the word of God and in partnership with the Holy Spirit, you begin to search through scripture looking for the patterns that are connected to the various dimensions of god's glory you see that now so lord i am trusting you to step into a level of favor and the blessing of the lord for the sake of my family for the sake of ministry for the sake of what i'm doing and he takes you on a journey and he shows you this is the blueprint 
and I did tell us in the morning for those of us who were around that because of God's insistence that we learn his ways there are times that he knows it is difficult for you to start fishing these patterns on your own so he personifies these patterns in men there are men who are embodiments of these patterns so that instead of searching Genesis to Revelation you can study these men for instance if you want to be blessed in the kingdom the personality referred to by God for your study is Abraham Abraham is God's idea of what it means for a man to be blessed Elijah is God's idea of a man who prays prevailing prayers that can take over territories are we together now Esther is God's idea of how favor works a woman who can leave Shushan as a villager Hadassah and then become queen over 127 provinces defeat her man and like I said in the morning she never held a knife are we together yes. when you read the book of Ruth Ruth is God's idea on how God can restore men when he talks about restoration you look at a woman who lost all her children lost her husband she was not the first to lose this kind of thing it happened to the widow in name but the life of Ruth shows us how someone can bounce back no matter what goes bad another personality that shows us territorial influence is Job you can study Job to know how God can lift a man and make him a captain over a territory. Job was a gatekeeper. And in chapter 29 of Job, he said, Oh, that I was in the days of my youth. He says, when his light, verse 3, 29, verse 3 of Job, he says that his candle shined upon my head and when by his light I walked through darkness. This is the spiritual pattern responsible for territorial influence you must have illumination and direction the candle that comes on your head is for light and illumination the candle that shines on your feet is for direction light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Illumination by the power of the Holy Spirit that you know what to do. It is dangerous to not know what to do. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Three keys that control the manifestation of God's glory. Haven't understood divine patterns. I gave us one in the morning and very quickly I'll talk about the other two so that we can have some time to pray tonight. It's a miracle service. Hallelujah. And I shared with us in the morning that the first key that controls the manifestation and the revelation of God's glory in the life of an individual, in the life of a people, is the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. The priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. The priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting. He spake a parable, Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, that men ought always to pray. Once you are a man, it is mandatory that you pray hallelujah are we together the priesthood ministry of prayer with fasting in Luke chapter 9 I did state in the morning that the primary assignment of prayer is not for receiving things there is a dimension of prayer that has to do with supplications and petitions for instance the Bible says be anxious for nothing it says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, it says, let your request be made known. So God wants your request to be known. He that told, he says, he have asked for nothing. He says, ask 
and you will receive that your joy may be full so god wants you to ask he says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it so i'm not against prayer as a spiritual channel for reception but the primary assignment of prayer according to luke chapter 9 please give us verse 28 the primary assignment of prayer is for the transformation of the believer and it came to pass he says he took peter john and james to a mountain to pray and a miracle happened in verse 29 as he prayed not before he prayed as he prayed transformation the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white that means prayer is able to prune the flesh in the presence of god through the ministry of prayer and fasting there is a version of you that you must evolve to to be able to host superior dimensions of god's glory in as much as god desires to cause his glory to rest upon us the bible says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity then he says in a great house there are all kinds of vessels some of gold of silver of wood and of clay he says some vessels are unto honor and some vessels are unto dishonor here's the condition he says if a man will purge himself that man will be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's use. Are we together? This is very important. In this kingdom, John 15, that anyone who bears fruit, let's read verse 3. There is a way that God builds people. Let's start from verse 2, really. It says every branch in me that beareth not fruit the moment you are not bearing fruit he does not destroy you he knows what you need he says will be taken away but every branch that bears fruit what does he do to it the moment God finds you bearing fruits he will stretch you to bear more fruits And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. He will stretch you in the place of prayer and tell you, look, this issue of praying for 20 people and having only one person healed that is not a, an accurate representation of my potentials let's go deeper into the things of the spirit so that you can host heavier dimensions of his glory he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint an attack on your prayer life an attack on your capacity to fast is a is a, a real attack and i did tell us we were speaking especially to the servants of god respectfully and this is true for anyone you know the more you get busy the more you have to prioritize your life it is my prayer that as you prioritize your life god will not be part of the things you downsize from your life no that the fire upon your altar will remain day and night jalingo i give you a key to genuine revival and effulgence of the power of god it will take more than conferences to bring an authentic revival it will take men and women who master the art of holding on to the horns of the altar the bible talks about anna the prophetess a woman who for more than 60 years of her life she kept calling Jesus to come down. Jesus did not just come to the earth. There was a woman who prayed him to the earth. Maranatha, come. That was her prayer for 60 years. The Bible says, call on me and I will answer. It says, I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I pray that we become a people of prayer. I pray that the homes in Jalingo becomes homes that pray. 
that we do not just pray when there is trouble or when there is a crisis no it must become a culture we must we must transfer that thought many religions the foundational tenets that they teach their children is the power and the invincibility of prayer prayer is powerful transformation show me a weak christian show me a timid christian living a defeated christian life among many factors some of them you are about to hear but submit yourself to the ministry of genuine prayer with fasting and i show you one who begins to evolve in the spirit has thou not known has thou not heard the bible says the everlasting god the lord the maker creator of the ends of the earth that he does not faint he does not get weary there is no searching of his understanding then he says even the young men will faint the old men will be weary he says but they that wait upon the lord a miracle begins to happen to you as you wait they will mount up with wings as the eagles he says they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint let me share with you one more revelation about prayer when jesus came into the temple please look up i'm trusting that god is speaking to us when jesus came into the temple he found men buying and selling is that true and the bible says he made weep and began to flog them he turned the table of the exchangers and with full of zeal and passion here's what he said he said my house it is written that my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of robbers please look up let me share with you a revelation there are two things the house of god can become either a house of prayer or a place for thieves i'm not talking of the church the first house is not the building the first house is you it is either you are a house of prayer or you are a place where the thief comes to steal to kill or to destroy jesus said it that the moment you take away prayer from this house the thief is soon coming and he will come to steal to kill and to destroy so you are either a house of prayer or a den of robbers a church that does not pray will never agree you will have all kinds of conflict coming from people who are walking in the flesh who will create all kinds of troubles and let me tell you this when we get people saved when we get people born again part of the systemic mentorship structure they must submit to among the many foundational things they must learn is the power of prayer if they do not pray you will have many people who are saved in church full of carnality full of flesh because the transformation that prayer should achieve in them would not be there so you have all kinds of harvests that begin to rot in the house of god causing all kinds of trouble for people do not fight prayer groups some of these are young people who have small small prayer groups fathers of faith don't fight them guide their foolishness and their childishness but don't destroy them because it is on the wings of those prayers that revival is a build up yes some of them will be immature some of them will misbehave the beauty of fatherhood is to rebuke yet to cover if the devil wants to attack jalingo i can tell you one of the ways that you will attack this city is to make sure like the days of daniel let there be no prayer for just 30 days that's all satan needs to destroy a territory for 30 days do not call upon the god of heaven but i see men and women of prayer rising from this conference in the name of jesus christ i pray that you will obtain grace to destroy spiritual laxity and laziness because there are many of you here the grace and the mantle for revival upon your city has been looking for you but not this version of you there is a version of you that prayer can produce many of the people who have been greatly used across the globe today 
they did not even know they were called to ministry they began to pray one hour every day every day every day every day now you see consistency is a law in the realm of the spirit consistency attracts the spirit component of that action that means for instance watch this i can come and steal it doesn't have to be the devil i have my human will i can use it to steal i'm not under the influence of the spirit of theft but if i do it tomorrow and i do it next tomorrow my consistency is attracting that spirit are you seeing that now so you can go to pray first day you are tired but once you are praying consistently you are attracting the spirit of prayer and supplication one day you will go to that place of prayer and you will not be by your strength again from that day onward you will not be able to undo it again it almost becomes like an addiction are we learning number two we have to hurry up the second key that is responsible for the manifestation of the glory of God is found in second Chronicles chapter 7 is called sacrifice you want to see the glory of God the glory of God answers to sacrifice the glory of God answers to sacrifice now this was at the time when Solomon remember how that David wanted to build a house for God is that true and God said it was a good thing that David wanted to build him a house but he said he had shed so much blood and David gathered the materials together to allow his son Solomon so this is Solomon now after building the house for God the dedication of the temple was about to start are we ready follow carefully the first five verses now when Solomon had made an end of praying again we see prayer there the fire came down from heaven and consumed what the bond offering there was first an offering upon the altar and then fire came and consumed the offering and the sacrifices and then as a result the glory of the Lord filled the house next verse and the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord why because the glory the very Shekinah of God filled the Lord's house verse 3 and when all the children of Israel saw how that fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground this is what happens when men experience a manifestation of the glory of God they worship the Bible says and they praise the Lord saying for he is good and his mercies endure forever verse 4 then the king and all the people offered more sacrifices again that means if sacrifice brought the glory let's offer more sacrifices so that the glory will remain can I tell you this as anybody who carries superior dimensions of God's glory and grace they will tell you it came on the wings of sacrifice sacrifice represents the constraints the inconveniences that happen in the life of an individual that give allowance for the manifestation of the power and the grace of God sacrifice there are many people who want to carry superior dimensions of God's grace but they do not want to go through a life of sacrifice it takes sacrifice to study scripture it takes sacrifice the labor dimension of prayer it takes sacrifice to fast it takes sacrifice to love the house of God even more than your necessary food are we blessed Psalm 50 verse 5 says gather unto me my saints he says they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice by sacrifice by sacrifice when Solomon was about to access the wisdom of God the Bible says he offered a thousand burnt offerings please look at me 
Do you know what it means to offer a thousand bot offerings? Replace everybody in this auditorium as humans. Just imagine that we're all sheep or rams. And Solomon said, I love you that much. Sacrifice it. 100, 200, and God was watching. Who is this? 300. Lord, I love you that much. 400. And he says, Angels, this is not for you. Stay back. This is now my business. This man is no longer calling angels. 500, 600, 700, 900, 950. He would have stopped, but he said, No. Lord, I'm showing you how much I love you. 1,000 bond offerings. And that night, not next week, the Lord came and said, you have called me. You called me and I am here. What do you want? And he asked for an understanding heart. He says, because you have not asked for riches or wealth, you have not even asked for the life of your enemies. He says, I will grant you that which you have prayed for and I will also give you the things you did not ask for. Riches, wealth and honor such as no man. Many of you do not know what sacrifice can do. There is a way you can press into the things of God and God will enter a personal covenant with you and say on account of what you have done for me, there are people who have emptied their accounts because of the kingdom. There are people who have done certain things that God vowed a vow over them and said for as long as you are alive, your children and your children's children will never beg for bread again because you have done this for me. Believers, can I tell you this? I'm not just talking about finances and the rest. But you see, in as much as I know that here and there people have been manipulated, people have been taken advantage of, can I tell you? you will never rise to certain spiritual dimensions until you sustain the grace and the power to lay down the power to lay down is how we pick grace the power to lay down is how we pick on common mantles i have the power to lay it down i told you there is a relationship between death and glory not everything comes by impartation there are wells you must dig by yourself sacrifice this is the reason why the bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake do you know why because upon the altar of these vessels there is blood dripping on that altar as a testament of sacrifice you don't just tell the sick be healed and they are healed just because you saw it in the bible no sir you don't just speak to people and say may your life change and then their lives change no no let me be sincere with you in the name of honesty it takes sacrifice it is all the grace of god but the administration of that grace comes on the wings of sacrifice some of you here god is calling you and telling you at the level you are operating spiritually there are certain levels of spiritual power you cannot carry you want god to trust you with the grace over territories no sir no sir no sir it comes on the wings of sacrifice please take it high from me once upon a time in my life i locked myself and i prayed for 72 hours my eyes did not see the sun i didn't know whether it was morning or night 72 hours that you don't know whether it's morning or night my eyes did not see a wall clock listen I don't say this to brag but sometimes it's good that when you are mentoring people especially people coming fathers of faith let's be honest to tell this our dear people how god brought us here so that they don't believe it's just by some arbitrary impartation 
there are politicians here one of the reasons why many people we are raising do not become effective is because they ride on the advantage and the leverage that our sacrifices are provided without the knowledge of the cost when a young boy has a father who is a millionaire and a billionaire and whether or not he's ready to understand the laws of life he's given a car and houses without any sense of discipline that child will most likely be a lawless person are we together yes i can tell you various points in my life i don't know how many times i have emptied my account i'm not saying to do that i'm just telling you that some of these things come on the wings of sacrifice sacrifice this is the secret of our fathers of faith that we so celebrate it is more than just what you see my dear people let me encourage you especially for many of you that God is going to be using for the revival in this land it is more than suits and nice clothes it is more than just protocol standing all those things are just systems of convenience and order your attention must be on jesus this one thing i do he says forgetting the things that are behind i press not just i move i press stop unnecessarily pampering yourself when you have not arrived no it is on the seventh day that he rested you are resting on the second day. It's not correct. God only rested on the seventh day. Many people are already resting by day two. You must constrain yourself. The discipline and the sacrifice that it takes to host the glory. In prayer, in fasting, in service, in giving. Are we learning tonight? So the second is sacrifice. One more scripture and we are done with this. In 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's start from verse 1. This was the story of Elijah. There is something for us to learn. The power of sacrifice. Please follow carefully. And it came to pass after many days, the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying go show yourself unto Ahab for the sake of time let's go to verse 9 I think so that we'll just save time Elijah went to Ahab and Ahab was sad and you know called him a troublemaker in Israel next verse there's something I'm looking for and then please continue it says and now and now thou said go and tell thy lord behold elijah is here so elijah came and oh dear i need to search for for the sake of time it's a long reading it ends in verse 7 but let's start from verse 19 i think it's 19 give me verse 19 thank you it says now therefore send and gather me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table there's about to be a demonstration a manifestation of the glory of God the God of the Bible is about to be exalted but not without sacrifice next verse 20 it says so I have sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Please follow carefully. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Next verse. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophet are 450 men let them therefore give us two bullocks now he wants fire to come from heaven but he starts with an object of sacrifice give us two bullocks and let them choose one bullock for themselves 
and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under back to 23 please let's finish it up and i will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under verse 24 it says and call on the name of your gods and i will call on the name of the lord and the god that answered by fire let him be god hold on hold on many of you want the fire let me tell you how fire is produced in this kingdom and all the people answered and said it is well spoken next verse now watch this so it was the time for the prophets of Baal to start and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal choose you one bullock for yourself and then put this and that 26 and they took the bullock listen which was given them and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal from morning till noon now notice the things that begin to happen from morning till noon that sacrifice on the altar and they were calling on Baal the Bible says they said oh Baal hear us but there was no voice nor any that answered and then they started leaping upon the altar look at how they were changing strategies all to call down fire they started by invoking and calling Baal then they started by jumping by the time we get to 27 it came to pass at noon Elijah mocked them and said cry aloud for he is a God either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is on a journey or per adventure he slipped very naughty prophet I must be awake 28 now watch this everybody read verse 28 this was the final strategy they deployed to get the attention of Baal one to go and they cried aloud and caught themselves after their manner with knives and till blood gushed out of them stop what did they know about Baal that when every other thing failed they said Baal we know since you will not accept the bullock you will see us cut our own selves after their manner that means someone had taught them that when everything fails be the sacrifice yourself you can offer sacrifices and get a, a measure of the attention of Baal. But if you want to get all of him and all else fails, more than giving sacrifices, become it yourself. This was the last card that they put on that altar. 29. And it came to pass, watch this, when midday was past, Elijah was a wise man and they prophesied until the time of offering and of the evening. Look at when Elijah started his own. He said, use your morning. There is a timing I'm waiting for. I, I, I understand the ordinances of heaven. I want to wait until the time of the evening sacrifice. And when it was that time, he said, you have done enough. I gave you from morning till evening. That there was neither any voice nor any answer to one that regarded 30 let's tie it up Elijah said unto the people come let me show you how fire is produced learn this now are you ready to see how fire is produced step one he said repair the altar you want fire step one repair the altar that was broken down this is fire now that is not lit by a man repair the altar of the Lord that is broken down step two let's hurry up Elijah now took 12 stones according to the number of the sons of Jacob the covenant he brought these are the ingredients now like a chef about to prepare a meal we see the repair of the altar of the Lord we see covenant now coming into the picture 32 and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord and made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed and he put on the wood in order 
and cut the bullock in pieces and laid him on the wood and said fill four barrels with water we see the ministry of the word there are you seeing it now these are the ingredients that produce fire genuine fire cannot come when the word is not there too so he says put water and he says pour that water on the bond offering pour the water on the wood 34 and he said pour the water again we need a lot of water for this fire for every one bullock you need serious water let the word keep pouring it do it a second time he says do it a third time and the water ran round hold on hold on hold on don't rush give us verse 30, 33 please don't rush it 33 and they did it a second time they did it a third time 34 it says and the water ran round about the altar and filled the trench with water these are the ingredients that produce fire and it came to pass at the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice that means in addition to your prayer life the altar in addition to your word life the water now you must wait for the time of the evening sacrifice and elijah the prophet came near and said lord god of abraham isaac and israel let it be known this day that thou art god in israel and that i am thy servant and i have done all these things at thy word 37 hear me O lord ah. hear me and these people may know that thou art the lord god and that thou hast turned their hearts back again 38 please talk to me and the fire shela katabaria and the fire fell over Chalingo. And the fire fell over every local government. Why? Because the altar of the Lord was rebuilt. It consumed the burnt offering. It consumed the wood. It consumed the stones. It consumed the dust. It licked up the water that was in the strength. Two more verses and we're done. He says when the people saw it god wants his glory seen they will never call upon the name of the lord until they see it they fell on their faces and they said the lord he is god the lord he is god last verse and the bible says elijah said take the prophets of baal let not one of them escape and they took them and elijah brought them to the brookishon and they slew them there that day the name of the Lord was exalted everybody shout sacrifice one more time say sacrifice dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate kato. Kate branda kata pakoto skoto breka teke nekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.